Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here this week to do our Wednesday night devotional and uh, look forward to it and just thank Christ for the opportunity. Uh, but before, i got some words here that's written down and I also have a verse of scripture from Mark's Gospel that I'll read that the, after I read the words I've get, got written down here. But before we do, let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for this time. Uh, as odd as it seems to me to do a devotional in this way, uh, Lord, I still thank you for the opportunity. And... Uh, Lord, I just, uh, it don't matter how crazy it gets, it's, we know that you're always close by us, and that's good enough. That's good enough for all of us. Lord, once again, thank you for this day, and thank you for this time. Lord, thank you for loving us, and Lord, thank you for, for the love that you've given us, this, it's enough to uh, share with others. Lord, uh, thank you again. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, I have a, uh, some words this, this evening that uh, I've had written down for a while. And I uh, guess looking for a good time to share them. And this seemed like the, the right time. And I have a just a few verses of scripture in Mark's gospel, chapter 10, to, I'll read after I get through reading these words that, uh, that uh, the Spirit of Christ give me. Back in, uh, let's see, we've been December the 2nd of 2019. Before, any, before all this other uh, weirdness, <laughs> weirdness started and... Uh, life changing and everything else but uh, uh it and we we still go on it don't matter but anyway the the words that that i've got written down here that i'll share with y'all a little later uh, in a few minutes i kind of wondered okay what what would be how how, how do i explain this one of them would be uh kind of the oddball times and how they can, if we're not careful, they can distract us. And I do believe all of us are guilty of that. The other is, uh, I, I thought long and hard about, uh, about church and asking the questions, what, what brings me back every week? I know the right word, uh, the right church word say, uh, we come here to worship God. We come here to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that's true. But there is some of the things that does bring us, keeps bringing us back. And uh, I thought about this, and I don't think it's too crazy to say it. Uh, you know, we, we want to say we come, we, uh, come here to find Jesus Christ but you also that 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 is true but I think it is also true to find him you got to see him and that's kind of what these some these words I hope I hope they mean as much to y'all that's going to hear these that they did to me when he when the spirit gave them to me to write down and uh, uh, a lot, a lot of memories, and I'll touch on some of those. But anyway, I'm. We, we'll get into it. Uh, the title, the uh, Lord always gives me a title to any words He gives me to write down, and this one here's got the title is going to be a uh, a song title you're going to recognize, and. Uh, it's from one of Bob Dylan's, Bob Dylan's uh, songs that, that he recorded. 
many years ago, but it's titled, The Times They Are Changing. Dylan, when he wrote the, wrote the song, it was more of a statement. The times, yes, the times they are changing. But my, in my title, it's got, I've got the, the, the times they are changing, but as a question mark. Because I'm still asking myself and I'm asking y'all, are they? But anyway, in saying that, maybe it all kind of makes sense here toward the end. This morning, there was a title to an old Bob Dylan song that came to my mind. The song was recorded by Dylan in 1963, released in 1964. The title track is one of Dylan's most famous. Many feel that it captures the spirit of social and political upheaval that characterized the 1960s. That song title was the times they are changing. One might ask why this song on this day at this time. For the lyrics written composing this song were written when I was just a child at four years of age. And today the Spirit of Christ asks, what about these times? Are they a changing? I know I can answer for the times of the 60s for I, like every one of you, remember the divide among people. The old film and news clips of two sides shouting down one another. One claiming you're destroying everything that's upright and moral, and the other side claiming if it's right, why are people dying in senseless wars? In short, it was kind of like Leave it to Beaver meets the flower power hippies. One portrayed as normal, one portrayed as defiant and disruptive to society and the norm. So I ask myself once again, why today? Why this morning? The title to this song, The Spirit of Christ, has nudged itself my way. I can only answer it this way. The Spirit of Christ that dwells in all of us doesn't just show up under the steeple in Sunday school or sitting in a pew. Sometimes it shows up in the title of an old controversial folk song from the early 60s. Some might call this crazy, but I call it keeping it real. So now I ask all of you, are they? Are they really a changing? Or is it me? Have I changed for the good? Or am I trying too hard? That's what we're taught. Be good, do good, then all will be good, right? The truth of the matter is time doesn't change. We hold the key to change. Now by the words I've just spoken, I bet I'll get pushed back. Something like, where have you been hiding? Or what rock have you been under? Haven't you watched the news or read a newspaper or searched the internet lately? Yes, I have, but sincerely and lovingly, can I or we change the times, you know, fix it? I know we think we can, but truly I ask, can we really? I believe it's a chase or if you prefer a race, we won't win. I know it's enticing to believe, to think I or you can change the times, but truthfully, it's fruitless. Yes, it's true, changes occur if we're talking about government, elections, economies. But what about the big things, separate from all the little things like the ones I just mentioned? For in the life of a believer in Jesus Christ in this world, they are little changes, not big ones. The times they are changing. Yes, they are. For it seemed... For it seemed like just yesterday, I called back memories of a small boy, some even said rambunctious, and maybe even a little bit mischievous. I had to take their word, but oh well, I'm sitting here today. I thought back of all the times of gathering here at this church, of all the services, 
baptism, fellowships, homecomings, homecoming lunches, Sunday school, Sunday school teachers, youth choir practices, youth choir musicals, RAs and GAs, summer revivals, and funerals. Oh yes, the funerals where we gathered around one another and said so long for a little while. I thought back of the pleated heavy velvet green fabric that stretched across the back of the old church and in front of the choir. You know what, looking back now, that old fabric reminds me of the dress Scarlett O'Hare made, made from curtains and gone with the wind. I thought back of the smell of the two large butane heaters on each side of the front of the sanctuary on those cold wintry days. The solid pine pews with no foam padding to sit on that truthfully got uncomfortable for a fidgety young boy. I remember Mama pinching me during preaching because me and Mark were talking and cutting up. I remember barely able to wait for church being over so we could run outside to play chess and tag behind the old overgrown shrubs on both sides of the sanctuary. Yes, I'm talking about the old wood cladded, white painted with Sunday school classes on both sides of the back of the church building. I remember Easter Sundays when all the young boys came to church with new outfits, shirts, pants, clip-on clip on bow ties, and get this, white shoes. Joe Willie's fault. Who knows? Sometimes change is good. I remember all the girls with freely lacy dresses, wearing hats with bows on them that wrapped all the way around and tied in the back. And it seemed like every hat was turned up on the rim all the way around. These are some of the memories of a man or woman now born and raised in the late 50s or early 60s here at this church. It would be easy for me right now to say, or maybe even you, yeah, there's no doubt the times have changed. But once again, have they? Have they really changed? Or is the right answer, I've just grown older? See, I prefer the latter. For the things I remember as a young boy haven't changed. Do you remember earlier the things I said I remember excluding the fashions? For they do come and go. There's one thing I remember the most. It is the faces. The people. The pawpaws, the grannies, the mamas, the daddies, the uncles, the aunts, the brothers, the sisters, the cousins, and all the other folks, whether kin or not, they felt like family to this young boy growing up. All those faces, all those years, all the love, all the kindness through good times and bad times, it hasn't changed. The faces have changed, but the love that comes from Christ Jesus hasn't changed. The times might, but this love I remember doesn't change. The times, I mean the present times, they trick us into thinking the worst of thoughts. They tell us bad days are ahead. So you better do all you can to thwart, thwart them off, and before you know it, I'm starting to let those days dictate my time. Time I could be spending, time I should be spending, feeling that young boy or young girl's childhood memories of a face like I remember as a child, where Christ's love in this church for me is all that mattered. Everything else is secondary, no matter what. That's what I want to be remembered for, don't you? Is there anything else worth this? The answer is no. Nothing even comes close. Christ Church here at Williams over my lifetime has garnered a lot of recognition, most all good, 
for some of the things she's done in her community, her state, her nation, her world. It's true, she's reached out for Christ's own words have asked her to. She's had good pastors who share the gospel of Christ Jesus. She's had good leadership, good stewardship, willing workers and servants. She's had all these. But am I wrong to say it's still not her greatest blessing? If I'm wrong, forgive me, Lord, for I, like everyone here, is still searching. I, like every one of you, find myself asking, what brings me here? What keeps me here? When everything seems to be changing. For me, for me and maybe you also, I think back of the faces, of the laughter, of the personalities, of the humbleness of all that aren't here anymore. The ones in my memory that are part of that cloud of witnesses Paul describes in Hebrews. Then just at that moment, I'm reminded they're still here. We can't see them, but they're, but they're here. We've all stood there. We've all sat there, gathered around one of those faces, saying, so long for just a little while. Giving and receiving hugs and comfort from one another like families. For we are family. Christ has joined us together as family. Today I think back just like you remember one of those days, one of those faces who were there the very day we ourselves accepted Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I said earlier, what is her greatest blessing given by the Spirit of Christ Jesus? It is simply love one another. Love one another like we love our own flesh and bone family. Love one another despite disagreements. Love one another with forgiveness, even if we believe we've been wrong. This is the church. She's not perfect. We're not perfect. But we still today have each other. Don't put it off. Don't wait. For time is a changing every day. For time is a changing. Every day is a passing. Every day is a memory. None of us know how many days we have left. But this I know, they're too short not to say I love you, or I'm sorry, or forgive me. Lastly, once again, that old song title from Dylan is echoing my head. Maybe yours too. It's true we're getting older, but we can't help that. Soon we'll leave here, this world, this church. We'll be that face for someone else, that young boy or that young girl growing up here in Christ church. Maybe one day when they sit down to revive an old memory from childhood, from growing up loved by a family that calls themselves Christ church here at Williams, and on that day, just like I and just like you, realize just how loved they were by that face and memory. Doing simply what Christ asked. One more thing I'm reminded of. Our Lord reminded me He holds time in His hands. Change is up to us. Some things never change. To Christ all glory. Amen. I'm going to read that. I find myself, and maybe some of y'all will agree with me. And if it, if it's not true, then he wouldn't talk a lot. Of, he wouldn't mention it as much as he did. It wouldn't have been written down in all the gospels as much as it as much as it was. And I talked about young children. I talked about uh, memories. Yours, mine. And we don't even know the the children's that's already uh, making memories. But I, I said that if you want to get grounded, get get away from all the craziness and get grounded. 
crack your Bible open and start reading about what Christ, how he talks about children. And what he does, he's, he's putting us in that same, that's that, the same room with those children. God, I love it. But anyway, this is Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a, like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for your, thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for, uh, for your words. Uh, Lord, I thank you for reminding us how important children are. Lord, it's, uh, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share your words. And uh, Lord, uh, thank you for loving us. And Lord, uh, because you've loved us, now we know how to go out and love one another. And Lord, that's, that's enough. That's, that's, pretty big. That's, that's all you really asked for us to do. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. In Christ's name, amen.